this point can state whether or not they feel that the discipline was appropriate for the circumstances. And I think it's important for the community to hear what the monitor is doing and what their position is. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, let's turn it over. Um, I am looking for a few uh, coalition partners who don't seem to be on. So um, let's move over to the task force. Um, Alexander? Um, thank you, Julia. Yep, go ahead. Um, thank you all again for your participation. My name is Alexander Landau. I am the outreach coordinator for the Denver Task Force to Reimagine in Policing and Public Safety. Uh, I am, as my colleague highlighted, also one of the founders currently serving as the director of community relations for Denver Justice Project. Um, I just want to highlight something real quick before I move into the questions. Um, many folks on this call, Denver Justice Project included, uh, worked to pass uh, a bill several years ago called 2B, which codified this very important office in the Denver City Charter, moving it from ordinance to charter, um, and then again furthered uh, the strengthening of the office through the coalition support and passing of 2G. Um, however, some of the things, as you've heard this evening, have fallen through the cracks. Uh, I myself, as a survivor of law enforcement violence here in Denver at the hands of District 6 officers, um, after being stopped for a pretextual stop, uh, have developed this question. How will you make sure police are tracking and sharing data on race, ethnicity, gender, and other important demographics of people they stop with the public? In addition, information on why they were stopped and whether or not searches, arrests, or violence occurred as a result of the stop. This data is not only supposed to be being collected and distributed to our communities, um, but it also highlights and is used as a tool of proof uh, when uh, discussing disproportionate impacts of the policing amongst the department's officers. I've lost track of whose turn is. Okay, go ahead, Mary. <laughs> I think it's Mary. <laughs> yes, thank you. And I think this is the heart of the biggest problem with oversight in most major cities now. The word no isn't the problem. The, the real devious problem is we'll get back to you. Thank you for that recommendation. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know and then nothing ever happens. So I think with OIM, greater tracking of things that are supposed to be happening and having follow-up on things that are falling through the cracks. What I would like to see in our annual report is a list of recommendations or highlighting or red flagging things that are deeply problematic or not happening using media contacts, using the authority of the office to shed light on these things that are not occurring, that are supposed to be occurring and that everyone agreed to. Uh, additionally, I think there's also work to be done behind the scenes, working with local politicians and partners. OIM is not a, a political organization. We're, we're in a neutral party and agency, but we can absolutely help get people in the right room together. We can absolutely provide our expertise to folks that maybe feel uncomfortable talking about these things or don't understand police procedure. You know, politicians come from a, a wide spectrum of backgrounds. They may not understand what we're talking about and why this is important. And ultimately, maybe changes do need to be made. Give teeth to something. And that can come through a legislative fix. So if data isn't given, there needs to be a fine. Money speaks. And if you start putting teeth to these things, but there's a consequence to when promises are broken, uh, I think there can be uh, very quickly data given out. Uh, but again, through my long-term vision for the office, as much data sharing as possible, everything that's in OIM's lane, let's work change our procedures to get that out to the public, and then let's work through our grassroots partners uh, to make sure that they're getting as much data as possible. How can we be an intermediary to get that done? And I think also using uh, the COB leadership, really working with them, okay, what are your priorities? Uh, what are, how, how would you like OIM to help in the most uh, productive way? And uh, yes, but it, overall, I think that's uh, one of the greatest things that I've learned working in oversight for the, the, in Sacramento is the word no is easy. When someone tells you no, you can go get the case law and say, you have to do this or we're going to court. Or you can go to the mayor or you can go to the media. But the, the real biggest problem I think in this field right now is where you have law enforcement partners say, okay, we'll get back to you. And then nothing happens. Was that, please? 
Thank you, um, Alex, for that question. The issue of keeping this kind of data has been going on in, with Denver law enforcement since, I believe, at least 2019, 18, I believe was Pastor Davis and Lisa Calderon met with law enforcement. They spent uh, countless hours working on trying to collect that kind of data and getting law, Denver law enforcement to produce that data. And a lot of people spent a lot of hours working on that and putting it together. And then as it is in city process, it was slow and it, nothing was happening. And then COVID came and everybody kind of threw their hands up and said, oh, well, COVID. So I think the community spoke up and the community said through Senate Bill 217, no, we are gonna make you keep track of, of that data. What that data looks like, what law enforcement is gonna give us. I noticed that recently on the website, we're starting to get some of that data. We're starting to see um, what kinds of offenses people are being arrested for, their um, ethnic backgrounds. Um, we're starting to see some numbers. That's only recently that I've seen it on the Denver law enforcement dashboard. But is that sufficient? No, we need to access that data and have the monitor's office audit that data and report to the community what that data finds. We're still having trouble with um, law enforcement giving us body cams and it says they have to. So what seems to be the problem? And, and 